1976 RCA XL100 color track color TV this uses the CTC 74 chassis it is solid state not hybrid no tubes portable tabletop color TV and I figured since the Michael Bloomberg infused flavored debates tonight are on NBC what a better time to pull out an RCA that's been sitting for probably 20 years unused and fired up. So let's have a look at it here. XL100. Of course, like all this tabletop stuff, these were once common and everywhere, but they're almost extinct now and super hard to find. With our ratchet style tuner. This also has this 75 ohm connector as well as the old rabbit ears. The set is filthy. It came out of a TV shop where everything I got so far has worked and it's probably been sitting there since the uh, sometime in the 90s. Here are our adjustments. Uh, model FA465. This uses uh, SCR horizontal deflection and I don't think I want to bring this up slowly voltage wise. I don't want any to run any risk of the horizontal oscillator not starting. I'm not that familiar with this setup deflection setup. I just know that they're extremely difficult to fix when they fail. I'll do my best to go over how to use a converter box to get a signal to this old TV. Uh, in this video someone actually asked me how do you how do you get uh, video on these old TVs? How do you get uh, modern broadcasts on these old TVs? I'll try and go over that. I thought it was kind of common knowledge but apparently not. So here we go. And I'll show you what I mean by the uh, by the deflection. See, um, so here's our basically like horizontal oscillator, and then we got one SCR here and one SCR here that drives the flyback. I'm sure a lot of people that watch these videos worked on these sets and are familiar with it. I usually only deal with tube stuff so this is a little bit more modern. Anyway, uh, I'm just going to brute force it. I'm just going to plug it in and power it up and see what happens. Like I said, I don't want to try and bring it up slow because if I remember correctly, some of these things in this era did not like low voltage and that could actually damage them. I'd rather have a capacitor short and pop the fuse or the breaker than screw those SCRs up. I did check the CRT in the previous video and it was it was okay all right here we go nothing Volume seems a little weak. I can s I can see the raster in the camera, but I can't see it. Yeah, there's high voltage. Ooh.
Ooh, don't want to do that. Um, I could swear I can see like flickering there, but. Well, we don't have any vertical deflection. And also these pots are... Yeah, these pots are not usable. Okay, so the first thing we always want to check when we don't have any vertical deflection on a color set is the normal service switch. We want to keep that line down, but here we have a normal service switch. And I don't hear the oscillator starting. I don't hear the vertical. Nope. So, you got to be careful here because we can't run that line on there for more than a microsecond or else it will ruin the CRT. Like I say, this this uh, TV came out of a uh, TV shop that I bought a lot of TVs from and all of them have worked pretty much up until this one. So. Let's get it off and see if we can diagnose it. It would be nice to have it working for tonight's Michael Bloomberg telethon. Look at the design of this thing. It's not light. It's pretty damn heavy. Got our power factor. Or they call these constant voltage transformer. Got our telephone bell. That way when the phone rings, the TV picks up on it. See, this is um, tuned to the same frequency as a telephone bell. So when the telephone in the house rings, this, this uh, oscillates at the same frequency and mutes the TV. So, let's see. This is... Color processing, color processing, it's got to be our video driver into the CRT. This is that modular crap and it could very well just be that dirty connections or bad solder joints. I wonder which one of these is the vertical board. What is this? It comes with a module puller. So there's the sound IF. Flyback transformer tripler circuit board. Horizontal vertical oscillator. So that's that one. That's this one right here. So what does it take to uh, pull these off? Not much. In fact, that black and green right there are probably the vertical output transistors if I had to guess. This is probably the horizontal uh, isolation transformer between the oscillator and those SCRs. Probably the oscillator coil and that little can. really good solder soldering on this this age anything can go wrong though 
transistors go bad, resistors go open. More than likely a transistor though. See, and then that one threads into this one. So I'm going to clean these. I just use some contact cleaner and a like a microfiber towel. I don't want to screw this up and then I'll clean the female side a little bit. Maybe I'll um, spray some spray in here. Okay, those contacts have all been cleaned. Take these screws out here and check this out. This is back when things were, it was accepted that things fail and need work. And uh, we live in a different time now. Our cult cultural is different. Could try that again. We live in a different time now. Our culture is different. It's much more disposable. And I wouldn't trade it for anything. I wouldn't want to live in the past. In this time, you only get one shot at this, so you might as well roll with the evolution. There we go. Yeah, maybe the new flat screens only last three to five years, but you know what? They're also made in a dark factory, and their overall uh, performance and picture and everything is better. You know what? I'm going to... Oh, look at this is open. I don't know why these were never put back on. Okay, I'm going to go through it. I'm going to spray all those controls. 7609. I mean, yeah, I love this old stuff and I love working on it and watching it, but is this is this where I'd want to stay the rest of my life and not see the evolution of electronics? I don't think so. Okay, I sprayed this. I sprayed all the controls in the front. I sprayed, I cleaned this. Um we have vertical hold, vertical height. Maybe I'll lubricate and spray these two. Look at this device. It's like a spring with a resistor in it. These are those uh, SCRs. Deflection, horizontal deflection SCRs. There's the tripler. 7546, that looks original. This might have a bonded yoke. Oh. Duh. Yoke is permanently bonded to the picture tube. Do not attempt to separate the yoke from the picture tube. Replace only with the same type integral yoke picture tube assembly. There you go. In other words, this is the beginning of the era when it takes a dump, you put it in the trash. That's why it's got a handle on top of it. Ease of disposal. Okay, here we go. We're trying to get this thing to work by t taking all the easy, uh, doing all the easy stuff first. And actually, this brightness control looks bad. And we still do not have any vertical deflection. This is a very admirable bodge right here. I just absolutely have been meditating on that. I think we should call that a Tom Steyer special. 
Okay, so let's see what we got here. This was not supposed to turn into a big repair video. This was supposed to be a uh, just a simple Bloomberger. This is the board. This schematic right here is this module. And so we have pre-driver, driver, switch, sync blanking, so I'm sure this switch right here is probably the oscillator. See we got a sync input, vertical yoke return, vertical feedback. So we got drivers and then these here comes out of the board into the vertical output transistors and then through a 4700 microfarad capacitor into the yoke. Okay, these guys right here, are those two TO3 package, those are the vertical output and it looks like one of them has been changed. What do we have here? It's a Motorola part, this is a well, the date code on that is 7513, and the date code on this is 7605. This is an RCA part. I think everything in here would be branded RCA. I don't think we would have Motorola parts. They might be made by Motorola, but I don't think they would be branded Motorola. Maybe we should just do some voltage checks on this thing. This is Q401-402. 401-402. So start with the collector. We should have 39.5 volts. Here we got 41 volts. Then we'll go to the base. We should have 20.4, so the base is the one without the resistor. It's this one right here. We have 34, that's way too high. That's 14 volts too high. Now let me point out on a solid state TV, the voltages should be pretty damn close to what the schematic says. On a tube TV, that's not necessarily so. The voltages can vary widely, but that's not true on a transistor TV. These, this should be regulated, and these voltages should be close to what this says. Um, go to the emitter, which is the one with the resistor. We have 33.5 volts. We should have 20 volts. Okay, so on the collector of 402, we should have 19.65, and we have 33. On the base, we should have 0.85. is the base here. Is the base the one with the three? No, the base shouldn't have anything on it. This should be the collector. I'm so paranoid about working on these things because one slip and you can EOL the whole damn TV. It's not like a tube TV. Stand by. Okay, so the, this transistor's flipped. They're flipped over from each other. So this is the 0.3 ohms. So that's this guy right here. So um, we want, this should be the emitter right here. So the emitter is 0 0.01, it should be 0.4, well of course because the transistors are not conducting, 
and the base. is 0.5 it should be 0.85 I wonder if there's any AC here does not look like it I'm measuring the voltages on the pins of the vertical hold control I want to see if maybe it was open and I basically have no voltage on any of these pins It's like nothing. So I'm going to take a look at the schematic and see where that is. Now the vertical hold is off the emitter of the output transistor back in so it wouldn't have any voltage on it. I wonder if this thing is a big feedback loop where if one thing goes bad anywhere in this it won't oscillate. I wonder if it doesn't have like a specific vertical oscillator it just the whole thing oscillates is a big loop with the feedback coming off of the e emitter of this transistor maybe I'll pull these and test them well this one looks clean we got two 500 millivolt junctions from base to collector and base to emitter so it's not shorted and it's not open same thing with this one to basically two 500 millivolt junctions and you know I'm just using diode test on the meter which is but I would think that if one of them was bad it would be open or shorted now I'm measuring the resistance on the horizontal hold control all the way closed 5 ohms it's definitely not open just kind of put it right about in the middle. Okay, this is the vertical deflection control and it is very flaky. It's all over the place. I saw it up to two megs. Very flaky. Same thing on this one, I've got it set in about the middle of its range, so neither pot is open. Another thing I'm noticing that's weird is the more I get this brightness control cleaned, now I hardly get the flashes at all. Like maybe the, maybe there's another problem with the set where um, there's a voltage missing from the power supply. Maybe the volume control is working right. very bizarre well the brightness is tied in with the normal service switch I guess we could actually check that and see if it's working it's interesting as I don't see where the normal service switch ties into this maybe the vertical oscillator is in this board because of the normal service switch is right here and it's um, so maybe the vertical oscillator is on this board maybe I'm looking in the wrong spot where does this sink sink so I wonder if the whole thing comes out of here and this is just an amp. Maybe I'm looking in the wrong spot. Let's, let's look at this brightness control. Let's voltage measurement that. So it says 8.61 volts here. Let's take a look at that see what it does on the meter. Clipped on there. All right. That's weird. That seems to work. The brightness goes from 6.99 to 
9.25 volts. But yet in doing that it has no effect up here. Uh, these things are tough to fix. If you ever wanted to get into vintage TVs, don't get into early solid state. Okay, here's one pole of the normal service switch. Let's do the other pole. Guess we're gonna check all the easiest stuff first. It's good. Okay, let's take a look at this MCL001A. Alright, this is that MCL001A. It's got a chip. And the brightness control comes in right here into the chip. But I'm also looking at this beam current limiter and I'm wondering if this thing has some kind of safety built in to where if the vertical pulse is not there it automatically cuts the the beam current off shuts down the brightness so you can't burn the CRT and the only reason we were getting those flashes is because we had a flaky volume I'm sorry a flaky brightness control kind of faking the system out um, Where is the vertical oscillator? That is the question. It actually looks like that is just a sink line because you can see it's here and it feeds into both, both the horizontal and the vertical. So I don't think that's... This has got to have be the vertical oscillator. Now whether it's a feedback loop you see it does say vertical feedback right there and that comes right off of the yoke so I don't know if this is a big loop or if for instance you could pull these two transistors out and the oscillator would still run There's a troubleshooting guide here and it says sweep. No vertical deflection, vertical switch, drivers, outputs, MCH001A module. That, that of course is that one right there that we cleaned. Just because we clean the pins doesn't mean that it doesn't have a bad transistor or something on it. Let's check the voltages on this switch. It's an interesting circuit right there. On the collector I should have 1.1 volt. I have 0.05. It looks like 33 volts comes in there through a 470 to the collector. Okay, well right there is the 470. See it? Michael Bloomstyre. And I'm on one side of it. And I got 34 volts. I got 34 volts on one side and 0 0.05 on the other. Now either the transistor is shorted or the Michael Bloomstyre is open. Now that thing's measuring right on 470. I measure that transistor, it's not shorted, so how is this voltage getting pulled off from 33 to nothing? I mean, it's, I know it's a 470K resistor, but I'm measuring it again, and it's on the diode scale, and I'm getting 1.3 volts from that point to ground, so what's going on here? You'll notice there's only two electrolytics on this board, and they're in the horizontal section, which is working. Okay, well the switch is supposed to have negative one volt on the base and it's got positive 0.5 which is enough to turn that transistor on and that would conduct, that would turn it on from collector to emitter 
And that's why we don't have anything on the collector. It's just all going through that 120 to ground. But I would think that negative voltage comes from the actual circuit working. So the circuit has to start before it works. I don't know if that makes sense, but like I say, it's a big loop. This is giving me flashbacks to when I used to work on these TVs as a kid and the, the late nights and endless hours trying to diagnose these things and get them to run. The, the tube, tube stuff is so much easier than this stuff. I mean this you really need to get your diagnostic skills on with this stuff and have a good understanding and I, I, I'm honest I'm rusty at this stuff. So we have 33 volts on these two collectors here. Now where is it getting that from? Well, I believe it's coming in here. Drops about a half a volt across there. Drops about half a volt across there and there. We need to check these three transistors. Need to pull these out and actually test them. Well, all of the transistors are checking good in circuit. Now that does not mean that they're good, but the junction the junctions are checking as they should with the meter in diode check. As in we got two junctions from base to emitter and base to collector and they're between 0.6 and 0.7. These two here are both 0.7, this one's 0.6. I wonder if I have one of these modules. I would just hate to put it in and have it fry the horizontal. Maybe I'll go look. I have a whole bunch of these modules somewhere. I don't have one of these and that's okay because I don't want to be one of those people who can't fix this stupid thing. I don't want to be a module swapper, a board swapper. That's uh yeah, that's that's not yeah. Especially with a simple circuit like this thing. I mean, why is this so difficult? It's got B+, plus, it's got ground and it won't run and it needs to run in order to clinko twerculate because nothing will fall into place until it starts running. None of these voltages will fall into place so yeah. Well there's one electrolytic here which is a 1.5 microfarad which is in the yoke return circuit so maybe I ought to go after that because the internet says that electrolytic capacitors are the cause of all faults and issues with vintage electronics. Okay, well there it is and it's only 1.5 microfarads and you can hear it's just letting treble through as it should and I compared it to this one and it sounds the same so it's not that the comparison and let me um okay well here's something interesting I believe this is the big 4700 microfarad and it sounds the same as a 1 microfarad see is that this one C409 because that would be part of the feedback circuit too if that thing wasn't there that you would never have a loop 409 according to this that should be that capacitor, and that capacitor is dead. Really? Is the internet right again? That big ass thing is open? Really? So 4700 microfarads, 4700 microfarads should sound 
like a dead short to this audio. Should sound like that. And that sucker's open. What a trip. Check this out when I put this in. Because it's feeding back through all the transistors and diodes. Well, we're going to jump that. Here's a 4700 at 35 volts. Let's see what happens. Hey, I'm Michael Bloom Steyer and I approve this message. No change. Ooh. But I see it filling the whole screen there. I don't hear it though. Oh yeah, it is working. It's just very dim. I see it now. Yeah, Michael Bloomsteyer. Absolutely Michael Bloomsteyer. Really? So it was an open electrolytic capacitor. The internet is now my new god. Come on, Channel 6. There we go. You bet. Hey, where's horizontal hold? Ooh. I don't want to wipe out that horizontal oscillator with that crap or that. Come on, baby. Crap. I don't want to wipe out the horizontal deflection with a bad pot. Okay, I sprayed the horizontal hold control. You bet, get your... Michael Bloomsteyer. Adelante. Quiero decirle mi querido padre que lo quieren un poquito más, pero eh, quiero decirle a los hermanos que el padre no se siente lo suficientemente amado, así que por favor a demostrar su amor, pero les tengo buenas noticias, mire, una persona que lo quiere muchísimo, 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 mi padre. Channel 6 Analog for Michael Bloomsteyer. We got all the colors there, are all the colors there, don't look quite right, but maybe... I can't quite extend the vertical all the way. If I go up anymore, it starts to fold over at the bottom. Uh, maybe that's a, that's a function of these crappy Chinese wires. Maybe I should try and tack that thing right on there. Okay. I eliminated those highly resistive wires. I know this is not the right way to do this. I will get the appropriate capacitor and get the old one out of circuit and install it correctly. But just so we can watch Michael Bloomberg tonight on NBC, because this is an RCA TV. But anyway, that getting those highly resistive leads out of the circuit uh, fixed. We have more than enough drive now. And it looks like all the colors are there. So to summarize, the issues with this were dirty controls 
and the vertical not working because the output capacitor was wide open and I gotta say I've never seen a capacitor like that open a big high value I've seen them short but I've never seen one just go completely dead so it was basically about cleaning the controls and diagnosing it down to the open capacitor these vertical circuits are a little bit different they're a big loop and if anything breaks that loop the oscillator won't run because it's not feeding back it's not seeing the output it's not it's a feedback loop so once again the internet was right you should always perfectly clean the chassis clean all the controls change every electrolytic capacitor and that will fix everything every time forget diagnostic skills you don't need those back for a red carpet okay you don't really need a whole lot of anything to pick up uh, over the air TV you need a good antenna this is not a good antenna uh, you need a converter box the antenna hooks to the converter box the converter box hooks to the TV and you get your Michael Bloomberg on okay here we go again to improve education for every child I want to thank the mayor of this great city, Mayor Bloomberg, for his extraordinary leadership. I share your determination to bring this country together to finally make progress for the American people. I'm Mike Bloomberg, and I approve this message. Oh, yeah. Be the first to know with the team in the know. Today in L.A., for you. Let us create the political revolution this country needs. The stakes could not be higher. We cannot afford to miss the mark or to miss this moment. I will bring this country together instead of tearing it apart. I can't do it alone. I need your help to climb that mountain. And together we're going to beat Donald Trump. 2020 is our time to change who makes the rules. I am running to restore honor to our government and build a country that we can be proud of. From NBC News, the Democratic presidential debate, live from Las Vegas, Nevada. I guess if you're outside this country, you probably wonder what this clown show is all about. Me crank the vertical up a little bit more and get rid of the data at the top. Chief White House correspondent and MSNBC anchor Hallie Jackson. Also joining us is Telemundo senior correspondent Vanessa Ock and editor of the Nevada Independent, John Walston, who has covered Nevada politics for more than three decades. The rules are this tonight. Candidates will get a minute 15 to answer each question and 45 seconds for follow-ups. Now that the stage is narrowed to six candidates, we encourage each of you to directly engage with each other on the issues. So let's get to our first question. Since the last time you all shared the stage, Senator Sanders, a self-described Democratic Socialist, has surged into the lead nationally in the Democratic race. And there's a new person on the stage tonight, Mayor Michael Bloomberg, a former Republican who spent millions of his own dollars to run in this race. What hasn't changed, a majority of Democratic voters still say their top priority is beating President Trump. Well, Senator Sanders, Sanders, the first question to you. Mayor Bloomberg is pitching himself as a centrist who says he's best positioned to win in November. Why is your revolution a better bet? In order to beat Donald Trump, we're going to need the largest voter turnout in the history of the United States. Uh, Mr. Bloomberg had policies in New York City of stop and frisk, which went after African-American and Latino people in an outrageous way. That is not a way you're going to grow voter turnout. What our movement is about is bringing working class people together black and white and Latino, Native American, Asian American, around an agenda that works for all of us. Did she raise her hand when he said Native class. American? And that agenda says that maybe, just maybe, we should join the rest of the industrialized world, guarantee health care to all people as a human right, 
raise that minimum wage to a living wage of 15 bucks an hour and have the guts to take on the fossil fuel industry because their short-term profits oh take my car take my car away from me and the need to combat climate change those are some of the beautiful picture the beautiful picture to defeat donald trump so, so mayor, like mayor bloomberg uh, uh, can can senator sanders beat president trump and how do you want to respond to what else he said um i don't think there's any chance of uh, the senator beating president trump you don't start out by saying uh, i've got 160 million people I'm going to take away the insurance plan that they love. That's just not a ways that you go and start building the coalition that the Sanders uh, camp thinks that they can do. I don't think there's any chance whatsoever. And if he goes and is the candidate, we will have Donald Trump for another four years, and we can't stand that. Senator so Warren. I'd, I'd like to talk about who we're running against. A billionaire who calls women fat broads and horse-faced lesbians. And no, I'm not talking about Donald Trump. I'm talking about Mayor Bloomberg. Democrats are not going to win if we have a nominee who has a history of hiding his tax returns, of harassing women, and of supporting racist policies like redlining and stop and frisk. Look, I'll support whoever the Democratic nominee is, but understand this. Democrats take a huge risk if we just substitute one arrogant billionaire for another. This country has worked for the rich for a long time and left everyone else in the dirt. It is time to have a president who will be on the side of working families and be willing to get out there and fight for them. That is why I am in this race and that is how I will beat Donald Trump. Senator, we got a Senator, 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 Senator Klobuchar, what do you think the path is? I knew is this was going to be good. To the White House, what works? I think the path is a high voter turnout. I'm the one on this stage that had the highest voter turnout. And I'm not going to do that because a campaign memo uh, from Mayor Bloomberg said this morning uh, that the only way uh, that we get a nominee is if we step aside for him. I think we need something different than Donald Trump. I don't think you look at Donald Trump and say we need someone richer in the White House. Thank you. Mayor Bloomberg, is a lot for you to respond to. There, so here's your opportunity. Um, I think we have two questions to face tonight. One is who can beat Donald Trump, and number two, who can do the job if they get into the White House? And I would argue that I am the candidate that can do exactly both of those things. Uh, I'm a New Yorker. I know how to take on an arrogant con man like Donald Trump that comes from New York. I'm a mayor, or was a mayor. I know how to run a complicated city, the biggest, most diverse city in this country. I'm a manager. I knew what to do after 9-11 and brought the city back stronger than ever. And I'm a philanthropist who didn't inherit his money, but made his money. And I'm spending that money to get rid of Donald Trump, the worst president we have ever had. And if I can get that done, it will be a great contribution to America and to my kids. Vice President Biden, let you weigh in there. In terms of who can beat Donald Trump, NBC did a poll yesterday. It says Joe Biden is best equipped to beat Donald Trump. That's what your poll said. And it said that I can beat him in, the, in those toss-up states, too, those states we have to win. I'm ahead by eight points across the board. So in terms of being able to beat Donald Trump, I'm better positioned, according to your poll, than anybody else to beat Donald Trump. Number we shouldn't have to choose between one candidate who wants to burn this party down and another candidate who wants to buy this party out. Look, we can do better. Senator, Senator think, Sanders, you know, are you polarizing? If speaking to the needs and the pain of a long-neglected working class is polarizing, I think you got the wrong word. What we are trying finally to do is to give a voice to people who after 45 years of work are not making a nickel more than they did 45 years ago. We are giving a voice to people who are saying we are sick and tired of billionaires like Mr. Bloomberg seeing huge expansions of their wealth. Mayor Bloomberg, what happened what happened was Vice President Biden right and you weren't a fan of Obamacare? Uh, I am a fan of Obamacare. At the That's beginning, uh, Mr. Vice President, I just checked the record because you'd said one time that I was not. 
In 2009, I testified and gave a speech before the mayor's uh, conference in Washington uh, advocating it and trying to get all the mayors to sign on. And I think at that time I wrote an article praising Obamacare. It was either in the New York Post or the Daily News. So the facts are I was there. Let me finish. Thank you. Uh, 